will be here. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, mentioning the implications and the importance of belief in Al-Qadr. Why is all of this important? What does it lead to? What is it leading to? And how does it affect? How does this Iman, a believer believing in this Iman in Al-Qadr, how does it affect him? How does it affect you and me and the believers in general? Right? And this is a very, very important point now to, to understand that inshallah we'll, we'll conclude our, our opening lesson with today inshallah. The Sheikh says, Therefore it is not possible to make tawakkal upon Allah. إِذَنْ لَا يُمْكِنْ أَتَّوَكَّلُ عَلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ بِهِ إِلَّا بِالْإِيمَانِ بِالْقَدَرِ So this now is the, the significance. Because we as believers, we are unable to have reliance upon Allah. We are unable to seek assistance from Allah, to seek aid from Allah, except when we have belief in Al-Qadr. So this now is the benefit of believing in Al-Qadr, because when we believe in Al-Qadr, that Allah to him is the creational decree, judgment, that Allah creates all things, He's created causes and their effects, and He's tied them together, then we take these means, we use the ways and means, in terms of what Allah has created, and then we rely upon Allah for the effect, right, for the outcome. So we are able to have tawakkal in Allah. We are able to seek aid by way of Allah. We make dua to Allah with, with isti'ana. And we are unable to live a happy, fulfilling life. As the Sheikh says, وَلَا تَكُونُ, ولا تكون الحياة سعيدة إلا بالإيمان بالقدر. No one can have a happy, you cannot be happy, and you cannot be fulfilled, and you cannot be inwardly Satisfied except with Iman in Al-Qadr. And for this reason, and this is the important point now, the Shaykh says, وَلِذَلِكَ تَجِدُ الْكُفَّارِ وَالْفُسَّاقِ تَضِيقُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأُمُورِ فِيمَا يَحْصُلُ لَهُمْ مِنَ الْمَسَائِبِ فَإِذَا ضَاقَتْ يَنْتَحِرُونَ لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ, لأنه ليس عِنْدَهُمْ نِعْمَةُ الْإِيمَانِ بِالْقَدْرِ What does the Shaykh say? The Shaykh says, for this reason, you will find that the people of disbelief and likewise the sinful, the sinful amongst the Muslims. You will find that when calamities come to them, then everything becomes very, very hard. They find life to be very difficult. And when life becomes very difficult, some of them, they commit suicide. They commit suicide, they take their own life. Because they do not have the favor and the bounty of believing in Al-Qadr. Believing in Al-Qadr. So here this is something extremely important that belief in Al-Qadr isn't just a thing that we, that we believe in. It, it is something that directly impacts the life of a person. The livelihood of a person. The character of a person. Right? And to, to finish our, our lesson, because we want to finish on, on this point, uh, I want to just read to you, um, just to give evidence for what the Shaykh has just said, right? That, that believing in Al-Qadr is something that brings you a happy life, and it makes you resilient to the trials and tribulations uh, of life. And the Shaykh made a reference to, to suicide, that you see that people who don't believe in Al-Qadr and or even sinful Muslims who have a deficiency in belief in Al-Qadr, we see that they commit suicide. So we have this paper here, and it's called The Global Perspective in the Epidemiology of Suicide. Right? So it's a, a paper discussing suicide all across uh, the world. And I just want to read a few bits and bobs from this, uh, from this uh, article. And um, so the section here, it says... Uh, so basically they're looking at the whole world, suicide rates amongst men and women, and then men and women combined, they look at different ages, and they're looking in different areas across the world, and looking at different even cultures and religions, right? So it's very good to see 
what, what's coming out of this, of this data. And so, at one point they say, uh, the highest suicide rates for both men and women are found in Europe, more particularly in Eastern Europe, in a group of countries that share similar historical and socio-cultural characteristics, such, such as Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and to a lesser degree, Finland, Hungary, and the Russian Federation. And the Russian Federation. Right? So these, these are countries historically where, you know, there was a lot of, uh, there was communism and um, uh, disbelief in Allah, atheism, materialism, as it is, as it is now. Um, and then they continue to say in another place, also, according to the WHO, regional distribution, the lowest rates as a whole are found in the eastern Mediterranean region, which comprises mostly countries that follow Islamic traditions. Right? Islamic traditions. And then we see over the page, we see in a section called, section called Absolute Numbers of Suicide, um, it says here, given the size of their population, almost 30% of all cases of suicide worldwide are committed in China and India alone. Right, so these are, these are communists, atheists, and mushriks, polytheists, idol worshippers. Right, so either you have atheism, an ocean of atheism in China, or you have an ocean of shirk in India. So almost 30% of all suicides are actually in these two nations, two nations of, of atheism and, and shirk. And then we see uh, suicide and cultural factors, uh, cultural factors, the case of religious denomination. And they say here, a comparison of suicides, suicide rates according to the prevalent religion religious denomination in countries brings to light a most remarkable difference between countries of Islam and countries of any other prevailing religion. Right? He said a remarkable difference between Muslim countries and any other uh, religion. Um, in Muslim countries, for example like Kuwait, where committing suicide is strictly forbidden, the total suicide rate is close to zero. It's close to zero. So then, on, on the final page of this uh, paper, this article, you have this graph here that you can see. If you have a look here. And the, the title is, Suicide Rates Per 100,000 According to Religion. Right? So if you have a look at that, you can have a, a look. You can see there's like five entries. Right? So we have at the... At the, at the uh, we have at the, on, on the, sorry, the left-hand side, we start with the Buddhist, and this is giving us numbers in terms of per 100,000, right? So the Buddhists, amongst the Buddhists, you know, men and women combined, you have a rate of 23 per 100,000, right? Suicides per 100,000 of population, 23, this is Buddhists. Then you have the Christian, which is 17, not far off. Then you have the Hindu, which is, which is 11. Right? But the reason why there's more amongst Hindus is because they have a larger population. Obviously, it's 1.4 billion. Right? Then you have at the end, atheist, which is 41. So these, obviously, they are the most happiest people. Obviously, they, you know, because there's no hereafter. There's no resurrection. There's no judgment. There's no right. There's no wrong. Right? It's just enjoyment. You make your life what you want it to be, your own rules. Clearly, you, you're going to be the happiest of person because, you know, there's no law governing your behavior. There's no halal. There's no haram. There's no restrictions. So you're obviously going to be the happiest person on, you know, on the earth. And so these people are taking their lives at a rate of 41, which is really double that of the uh, Buddhists and, and the Christians and, you know, quadruple that of the Hindus. And then we have this thing, this, we can't even see the Muslim. What do you see there? 
zero, literally 0.1 no. per 100,000. It's not, it's not even one. It's not even on the scale. It's, it's 0.1. Right? Why is that? Well, exactly what the Sheikh said. We have Al-Iman in Al-Qadr. We believe in Al-Qadr. We believe Allah decreed all things. And we believe Allah knows all things. And we believe because Allah gave us the legislation as well. We have the legislation. We pray. We fast. We, we ask Allah for isti'ana. We you know, make tawakkul upon Allah. And, and in fact, uh, the Shaykh was on to mention, and we can finish with this uh, hadith. He says, وَإِذَا كَانَ الْإِنسَانِ إِنْدَهُ إِيمَانٌ بِالْقَدَرِ صَبَرَ عَلَى الْمَقْدُورِ وانتظر الفرج من الله عز وجل وسهلت عليه المصائب وانشرح صدره دائما so when the believer when a man when a person the insan he has belief in al-qadr he will have patience upon whatever is decreed he will anticipate relief from Allah that Allah will make things easy and give him relief and calamities will now become easy upon him Calamities will now become easy upon him. And his chest will always be expansive, always. He will never, his chest will never become constricted. Because why? He believes in Allah, he believes in Al-Qadr. He knows that Allah, whatever comes to the believing slave is always positive, is beneficial. And that's because we have the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam from uh, Suhaib radiallahu anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah he said, عَجِبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ How amazing is the affair of the believer. Inna uh, amrahu kullahu khair. Indeed, all of his affair there is goodness. وليس ذاك لأحد إلا للمؤمن. This is not for anyone but a believer. In asabat husarra shakar. If something good and pleasing comes to him, he is grateful to Allah. فكان خير الله. And this is better for him. وإن أصابته ضراء. If something harmful afflicts him, sabr. He then has patience. فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And this is better, this is better for him. Right? So, from all of this, we see uh, the benefit of believing in, al- ima- uh, in believing in Al-Qadr. And you can clearly see from Allah's creational decree, the evidences are very clear that the Muslims are the most resilient, the most patient uh, with the most expansive chests and they anticipate relief from Allah and they're able to have patience and they, they are able to enjoy life and this is from the, 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 the fruits of Iman that when you believe in Allah and the, and, and, you know, and the last day and Al-Qadr and paradise and hellfire and absolute uh, you know, truth and falsehood and judgment and reward you have something to, to live for and anticipate and you will be the happiest person and, and conversely, when you believe in nothing and you, you disbelieve in the hereafter and in absolute truth and you, know, you want to make up your own law and your own rules and you follow your passions and desires and follow your own philosophies and whatever, yes, you, you'll get worldly enjoyment, but really there's no satisfaction in the heart. Right? There isn't any satisfaction in the heart. And that's why these people... They can go, th- go through the whole of life, engage in everything, have all the money, drink, women, cars, palaces, mansions, holidays, everything, yet they are empty inside. Right? There's no satisfaction because there's no dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this then is, is the, from, from the greatest fruits of al-imanu bil-qadr. Right? But in this principle, we want to connect Al-Qadr with Al-Shara, with legislation. And we are going to look at the people who fell into misguidance in these issues, right? So remember in the Sifat, in the attributes, what did we do? We looked at the foundations first. Then we looked at the philosophers, the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'tazila, the Ash'aris, Maturidis, and how they all deviated. We're going to do the same thing with this principle of Al-Qadr and al shara So we as people of Tawheed and the Sunnah, we believe that these are inseparable. You, you can't separate these two things. If you believe in Al-Qadr, you have to believe that Allah is, is in His legislation. And there's no contradiction between these two things. Right? But there are some people 
who went astray, right? In Al-Qadr, and likewise in Al-Shara'. And so these are the things which are ahead of us in the lessons to follow, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to, first of all, establish the foundations. What are the levels of Al-Qadr, Al-Ilm, Wal-Kitaba, Wal-Mashi'a, Wal-Khalq? Once we've got that foundation, then we're going to look at, you know, combining Al-Qadr with Al-Shara'. And then look at the groups who went astray, those who reject the Asbab, those who exaggerate in the Asbab, those who deny the, you know, the, the creational Asbab, and those who deny the legislative Asbab, right? We'll be looking at all these groups, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, we can bring our first lesson uh, to a close. So this is, um, to, to keep the numbering in order, this is the first lesson on the second asal, but it is the 36th lesson in the series, right? So in the series, we're on lesson 36, but this is the first lesson on the topic of Al-Qadr. So we'll stick to that system of numbering, inshallah, for the rest of the, the, rest of the series. So with that, we'll conclude. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.